Welcome to the Creative Plan Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews of items, and convention panels, and other exciting things that we run into from time to time. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Hey guys, Jim and Kelly here with Creative Plan Podcast Network. I must use my Shatner voice. For I must be dramatic. Uh, don't you mean melodramatic? No, no, it's just dramatic. <laughs> for hashtag RPG a day 2020, the word for the day is... Dramatic. That was pretty dramatic, too. I can say it again. Dramatic. Now, now, now say it with heartbreak. Dramatic. No, that sounds more like traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> So for dramatic, I will go ahead and start up with the, as a GM, when you're setting up your games, make sure you know when it's supposed to be dramatic, because we all know what happens in those games when you're trying for the dramatic feel, and everybody's just finishing up their pizza, and they're giggly, and they're goofy, (laughs) and they're totally not in the dramatic frame of mind, so it's blowing the drama out out, out of the scene. Mm. So it's know your audience of of who you can expect drama out of, too, because, you know, like I, I've been known to, you know, have a dwarf blow the head off of a guy. And I got mega drama out of that scene because I knew who my audience was at that point. <laughs> if you know the Ragnarok and Roll uh, person I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when Thora, you know, was doing her thing, especially since she said in and out of character, you have better not have anything happen to my flank in-game family. I'm mm-hmm. totally going to have to make something happen to your in-game family. She totally lost her mind. Well, remember, I had to edit out eight minutes of her tirade of freaking out <laughs> that it, it was all just you a dream. Promise. You the, promise. She literally went through all the steps of grief. I mean, she was even negotiating with me at one point. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty dramatic moment. <laughs> yeah, so, so drama is – dramatic is something you can engineer. Dramatic is also a thing you can pre-plan too. I mean I've I've worked it out with players before where we've planned a dramatic scene. Sometimes it works. Often it does not, especially <laughs> if the other players are like, what's going on? We're confused. Yeah, um, uh, the, the person has to be game, um, and they, they have to, it has to be, uh, it has to mesh. Can't be forced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although, for me, like, one of my, like, favorite dramatic moments was when, in, uh, Daggers of Freeport. Uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, um, uh, not the Deckers of Freeport, the High Sea Shenanigans, when the half orc monk had said goodbye to his young charge, you know, and Page. he, you know, who he protected, you know, this child. And when he, he had said goodbye to the child and he was feeling kind of, you know, uh, sad about, you know, make, you know, letting her go. Um, that when we were in the port during the festival of masks and we went to all the different mask stores and stuff and he purchased the iron mask, the crude iron mask. And he had them heat it up. And so he could like brand it to his face have the you know, scarification. in reference of his pain. It was really moving. 
You know, I mean, and, and the thing is, he had no idea we were going to be going to this port. None of us did. Um, it was sort of like um, this, you know, uh, surprise. And I'm like, uh, and I rolled with it, totally rolled with it because, yeah, yeah, my dad told me all about this place, you know, and the Festival of Masks and how I've always wanted to visit. Um, and, you know, because my father used to tell me stories of this place. Um, so they were all down with coming with me to explore this, this, this exciting, uh, festival. And when he did that, it was just, I mean, and then my character just had to, you know, just without saying a word, you know, just went up, put her hand on it, you know, mm-hmm. like, I got your back, bro. Oh, it was just so moving when when the player had done that. And I was like, oh, my God. I mean, that there was that dramatic moment that just resonated with me. I mean, that was one of my favorite ones. One of my least (laughs) favorite was when Trixie was betrayed in... (laughs) Ragnarok and roll and I felt I was heartbroken, you know, because Trixie as a character did not easily trust. And so she'd spend days with this guy having fun, you know, and it was, it was a, you know, a, a working relationship, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But they still had a connection and she really liked him. You know, I mean, she wasn't going to marry him or anything. Hell no. But they had, you know, a connection. And when he betrayed her, it hurt. I mean, I was like, oh, my God, Trixie. You know, and then to find out all of this stuff, she was broken after that. The character made from these that dramatic moment completely changed part of her original background i mean the mm-hmm. the way she reacted to things she's no longer quite the fun loving you know she's like more reserved now and a little darker much like the it. loki yeah character well, arc. well because of loki <laughs> So, because of Loki, you're turning just like him. <clears throat> yeah, right. From right. giddy, fun-loving kid to, oh, I've done some shit, man. I'm so, I, I, I'm Loki now. Yeah, because by the same token, she felt betrayed by her father, too. Mm-hmm. You know, not that she had the, like, strongest relationship. Hell, he is Loki, after all. But, you know... It's one thing to use people as, you know, pawns or chips. It's another to use your daughter, you know, Mm -hmm. type of thing to her mind. So she didn't want – it's like she felt that she was the patsy. True. And it broke her. I mean, that dramatic moment, you know, probably was her least favorite, you know. But crazy dramatic, though. I mean, I really cried. I did. I mean, those were real tears. Are you saying that I pushed you guys to the edge in gameplay, making things so dramatic? (laughs) Not usually. I mean, usually we're a lot more low-key, relaxed, you know. But there are moments of of drama that, um, I guess, in role-play – it's like, and I know Trixie is not me, <laughs> but I felt so bad for her. You know, even though I was playing her, it was like, it was, you know, you know, I know she was my creation, mm-hmm. but she was changed by that experience. So, yeah, D- I mean, it, Dramatic is definitely a thing when you, you know, role play and you get these moments of drama that, <laughs> I mean, there was the, also the other <laughs> moment in Daggers of Freeport when, uh, uh, the rogue is 
basically interrogating the flower girl who's Ooh. really the nanny who was sent to like and there was a moment where he intimidated the hell out of me. It was like, oh, oh my god! I'm like, oh, I've got, I've got shivers. You know, it's like, um, but that's not the ca- That's not the player. He was just playing his character, and he's such an incredible role player. Mike is one of the finest role players that I've ever gamed with, and um. The fact that he can be, he has that ability for those dramatic moments that just really resonate. Where he's gone to the scary place. He's gone to the scary place or he's gone to the truly endearing place mm-hmm. or, you know, so it's like here he is, he's, here he, one character is this, this guy who, it, his first thought is to protect ch- the child and, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So Mando, um, but the child. a lot more heartfelt. You know? And then the, the next minute, he's this like syndicate rogue enforcer <laughs> that like scares the hell out of you. It's like, but it's all the same person. And because he's such he 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 knows how to be dramatic but in the right way so it's like it really can make a very powerful gaming experience having the dramatics in there and hey and i'm not talking hysterics Mm -hmm. i'm talking dramatics so um be it the you know yeah, that the scary, scary guy who like <laughs> tears the wings off of flies, or you know, to the you know, it's it's just it's it makes for really beautiful gaming moments when the drama is mm-hmm. you know done right. We're like TNT. We like drama. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all about the drama. Hey, I mean, think about it. The drama is what brings the life into your RPGs, where it goes from being just a tabletop board game to an RPG, where you're actually playing a role and getting into the story and pushing and pulling the story threads along as as you are part of the show. Yep. So, uh, here, here for dramatic. Mm-hmm. Bravo, brava. So that is a good place to wrap up for August the 16th, Dramatic. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.